In today's video, we're going to go through my top five uses of Mesh Mixer for your 3D printing projects. If you've never heard of Mesh Mixer before, this is a must watch video. Let's get started. How's it going guys? Angus here from Makers Muse and I have not done a Mesh Mixer video for absolutely ages. This bit of software is amazing. It's free. It's uh, supported by Autodesk, although it wasn't always owned by Autodesk. And it is a mesh manipulation powerhouse. I've been using Mesh Mixer for years to manipulate my 3D models and meshes I download from the internet for my 3D printing projects. And I came to realize that I haven't done one of these videos for so long that many of you guys might not even realize anything about the software or how it works or how to use it for your projects. So in this video, I'm going to go through my top five uses of Mesh Mixer, top five tools that I recommend. And if you guys enjoy it, I'll go through the list. There's many, many tools in this, in this bit of software now. It's very powerful. So use number one is the ability to import and export different types of mesh formats. You see, 3D printing software generally only takes STL files. It's a very old mesh format, originally developed back when we had, you know, stereo lithography 3D printers and that was about it. But most, most slices still only take STL, but there's many other mesh formats available and Mesh Mixer can handle them and you can import and export between them. And it's very powerful because you might get a file from a different bit of software that can export to something in a mesh format, but not STL and you can actually use Mesh Mixer to convert between. So just to demonstrate, here I've got the Stanford Bunny. I can go to File and uh, Export here. And you can see in our drop-down menu, we have OBJ, which is commonly used in the 3D modeling and uh, animation workspace. We've got you know, different color formats, so you can actually attach color to many of these mesh formats. We have different types of STLs. We have ASCII or binary, depending on what, what your software might prefer to take in. Obviously, there's a size difference between ASCII and binary. Uh, .3MF, now this one's really important. Uh, .3MF and uh, to a degree AMF are newer additive manufacturing formats, but they're not so widely adopted. Uh, 3MF in particular can preserve color data and other information, and it's much smaller and lighter than STL. But again, not many slices can take it in. So you can go convert between these two in Mesh Mixer if you need to, which is very powerful. And then we have some other sort of legacy things like Collator and VRML. VRML again can, can, can preserve uh, color data. Um, Smesh is a new one, I haven't even heard of it. Uh, that's recently added. And also PLY is commonly used for color as well. And often I'll get files from games in PLY format with color data, and then I will edit and convert them into STL for 3D printing. So very, very powerful, the ability to import and export different types of meshes, and it's all possible with this free bit of software. Use number two is scaling in Mesh Mixer. So this is a very easy way to scale your STL files or mesh files up or down for your software if it doesn't support scaling natively. So to demonstrate it, we need to go into the analysis menu. So just analysis here and then units and dimensions. And it will show the scale of your model in X, Y, and Z coordinates. So here my bunny is only 50 millimeters uh, here in the Y, uh, although it looks like Z. The X, the, the Z and Y can be mixed up depending on the coordinates in your software. Not a big deal, just keep, just visually uh, identify it. So I can easily change it to be, you know, maybe 89 millimeters high. And it will update, and now we have a bunny changed in size. So Though it doesn't actually look like anything's changed, and that's because STL files don't preserve the units that they're scaled in. So this could be 89 anythings, and it's up to your importing to tell the software what units you should use. So I would normally work in millimeters. Most people work in millimeters, but sometimes files are exported and scaled using inches, imperial and you can use Mesh Mixer to correct that and scale to what you actually want it to be, then export it again if you can't do it natively in your slicing software. So I use this all the time to scale things uh, independent of my slicing software, and it's really, really handy, especially for scanned meshes, which may be completely incorrect in terms of their actual realistic scale. Number three is by far the most often tool I use in Mesh Mixer, and that is Plain Cut. Now, Plain Cut is fantastic. I've done videos on it many times in the past, and it's a good way to cut your STL mesh up into parts to print them on your smaller printer. So, for example, you've got a small build volume, you need to print this in several parts to print it larger, plain cut is the tool you need. So you go into the edit menu and plain cut, 
and it's very, very powerful. In this case, we wanna change it from cutting to slicing and keeping both halves, and we can just choose to where we wanna cut. For example, we can cut the bunny along here. We can uh, move it here or just rotate it, whatever you like. You can change the discrete steps as well by using up and down arrows if you want to increase or decrease the, uh, the steps. And we can cut it, for example, like that. That doesn't visually look like anything's happened. That's because we need to separate these into two separate bodies, which is using the separate shells command here. And by clicking that, we now have the body and the head. And as a bit of a pro tip, you can actually isolate the areas you want to play and cut. For example, if I want to cut the ears off here, but not impact the body, I can actually isolate them and play and cut them uh, separately. So I can use the select tool here to just draw a circle around the ears like this. So then they're, light, they're lit up orange, which means they're isolated, they're selected. Then you can go to edit and then play and cut from this menu. And I can actually cut a plane right like that through here. And you can see that even though it's intersecting with the body of the rabbit, it's not actually going to affect it. It's only affecting the ears. So in this case, I can just discard it and it's gonna cut them off right there. A little bit, little bit mean to our poor bunny, but you can do it if you need to. Next is a tool that I've already alluded to and that is the separating shells command in Mesh Mixer. Essentially what this does is you can combine or separate bodies of meshes from one file. So an STL file can actually have hundreds or thousands of these separate bodies uh, and you can actually separate them out using Mesh Mixer. Now this is really powerful. I used to use this all the time to create assemblies at my old work where we'd bring in assemblies from SolidWorks exported to individual uh, meshes and I would actually bring all the meshes into one file in uh, Mesh Mixer. It would already preserve the origins and then I could combine them as one and repair it to suit. So to demonstrate how you can use this, I'm gonna bring in my multi-color candy can designed in my Fusion 360 uh, sweep tutorial not too long ago. So I've got these three files here. I'm just gonna bring them in and these build up each part of the color of the multi-color candy cane. So I've dropped them in all at once into Mesh Mixer and I have three objects. You can see in the object browser here, I have one color here and then one color here and then finally one here as well. But what I can then do is select all of them like this with shift and I can do a combine. And this is just combining these separate bodies into the one, one uh, STL file that I can export. So it's not doing any modifications. They're still exactly as they were, but I can now export them as one. And some multi-color or multi-material printers prefer it this way. They don't want you to bring it in separately. They want it to bring, be brought in at once. Alternatively, some want you to bring it in separately. So let's say this is how you receive the file, multiple STL files in one. Or for example, on, on Thingiverse, often people will save a platter of files. So it'll be like 20 files, for example, for a 3D printer, but they're all in one STL file ready to go on their specific printer. But you want to print just one part. Well, you can bring that file in and you can actually do separate shells. And this is the opposite of combined. Separate shells will just simply bring them out, as you can see here, into the three separate objects. And then to save just one of them, you can just go to File, Export, and save it off separately. And our last tip for this video is repairing. Now, this is a whole can of worms. Repairing a mesh mixer is a very powerful and complicated topic, but I'm just gonna show you one simple method of repairing where you might have holes in your mesh for whatever reason, maybe it's uh, maybe it's a scan, or maybe that's been uh, exported slightly poorly, or maybe it's just not designed for 3D printing. For example, this this bunny here, the bottom is completely open, and that line thing shows the other side of those triangles. So it's not suitable for 3D printing. It's a zero thickness surface. So a really easy and quick way to see if a file has any errors in Mesh Mixer is to go to your analysis tool and Inspector. Now Inspector will figure out where there's errors and if it can fix it. Now blue is showing that it's very easy to fix, but if you see like lots of red, red dots, that's probably not a great sign. You might need to use a bit of other software or a more complicated method to repair that file. But this is very simple and I can, I can do one of several things. I can just simply click Auto Repair All or if there's lots of blue arrows and I wanna see them individually, I can just click that arrow. So click them here and what it's done is perfectly capped off that base. Now, if you have a, uh, 
a file that is very organic and it's not meant to be flat fill. It's again very simple. Inspector, you can change from flat to smooth. And if I do that and fix it here, it will add this horrible, horrible looking lump to our rabbit. But if it was a part, for example, on the top here, you would want that smooth fill to kind of approximate where that hole is compared to the rest of the uh, geometry around it. So there you have it guys, five uses for Mesh Mixer for your 3D printing projects. It's an amazing bit of free software. I, I'm actually dumbfounded that it's actually still free. I would pay money for this. And let me know in the comments guys if you want to see another video on other uses of Mesh Mixer. I'm so happy to bring it back because I realize so many of you haven't even seen this software for your printing projects. And let me know what your favorite uses of this bit of software are. Like, there's so many things you can do in Mesh Mixer now, it's absolutely insane. So I hope you enjoyed this video guys, and if you did, please feel free to subscribe, it helps me out a huge amount. I love to empower your creativity with 3D printing, I look forward to seeing you again very shortly here on Maker's Muse. Catch you later guys, bye.